we did it the first time as a giggle. We felt there were too many mutants. So we did the massacre to call the, to call the herd. Jeremy Greer. And I'm Gary Butterfield. And this is Days of Future Cast, the podcast where Gary and I read bad comic books for some reason. <laughs> we made this big ordeal about leaving, not wanting to cover X Men Evolution because we were like, this sucks. We're not having fun. We're our own editors. We're our own bosses. We can do whatever we want to. Let's choose some of the worst comic books in X Men history to cover <laughs> instead. <laughs> it's a, like, mutant, I, I like Mutant Massacre. Uh, and I like the stuff that happens in the, this thing. But it's a tough read. Yeah. We need to take a, a break from the 80s. Uh, I, I need, like, you know, we should, I mean, we haven't talked about what we're doing after this. We need, we should do, we need to do an unqualified win. Yeah. Like maybe this is the time we, we pull out the Remender X Force okay. card mm-hmm. and just like read a good fucking comic. Mm-hmm. Cause like there, there's charm to be had in some of this stuff and funny things happen. And there are designs that I still have a lot of nostalgia for. But there's a comic we're talking about this session that was one of the hardest things to get through that we've done for the show. Like, harder than weird side issues about the human council in Age of Apocalypse. Like Opening that book up and then, like, reading it for a while on the couch and then tapping it on the iPad to see, like, how how much could possibly be left and realizing there were 15 pages left in it because it was a 40-page <sighs> book. I was like... Maybe I should just quit the podcast. Maybe maybe Duffy doesn't need me anymore. Maybe maybe it's outgrown me and the things that I'm I'm willing to do for the for this network. <laughs> it's it's a rough one, and it's I I'll take some blame for it because it's kind of we we had this. Uh, so there's one more issue of Mutant Massacre. Mutant Massacre sets up Fall of the Mutants. During Fall of the Mutants, Angel becomes Archangel. That's what I wanted to to cover in this because it's undeniably like an important X Men thing, right? Like. If we're an X-Men podcast, Archangel's important. And it, it actually segues really well into the uh, Rook Remender X-Force. I didn't think about that. Um, that's a good segue. Because all of that lays the groundwork for good character work that's going to come. It's just a 30-page goofy, shitty fight <laughs> with like the characters just saying the same things over, over and over. and over again. Just pontificating <laughs> constantly. The same two points. Yeah. Like over and over you know, again. There, <laughs> there's a there is a, a a Greek play we read in high school. Um the the name of it is is escaping me. But like the basic conflict of it was the main character wanted this person to bury their brother, uh, who had died dishonorably and they wouldn't. And we read it and in high school me and my friends used to always make fun of it and we'd just be like, you know, bury my brother. No bury my brother no <laughs> and that just being the whole play you know we spent and that's what this is is it's it's you know hu- peace is bad humans will test you they're bad no humans are good and they just keep saying it over and over and over for the whole fucking fight dude it is uh, it's cruciating and, and if you have not gotten near fill of not being able to affect somebody, but blasting the thing above them and having the ceiling collapse on them. <laughs> Boy, howdy, you get more because <laughs> it was, it's like the most common verb of comics at this time. It's really like, bizarre, man. Like I want, I just want the, Cyclops the, to hit somebody with a beam. Is that too much to ask? Hey, just it, one beam it, shot just, on the body. I just want one body beam shot. That's all I'm looking for. The, the Beyonder should show up at this point in the comics and introduce Osha man <laughs> whose power is just to collapse roofs on people. <laughs> And he would be the most powerful fucking character in the Marvel universe. Oh my god! Like, it's the best thing somebody can aspire to in this world. Collapse the ceiling. Well, let's uh, it uh, just happens nonstop. Let's wrap up the 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 mutant massacre uh, with Uncanny X Men yep. two fourteen, um, which yep. really is kind of deals with some of the fallout, but also just is mostly a a dazzler slash malice issue. Uh, and uh, Ma- so malice is a marauder. This was their little side, you know, satellite mm-hmm. character. So th- this is part of the attack. You know, but it just also happened in California. Like the Marauders are like, let's kill this group of freaks in the sewers. 
and Dazzler on the opposite coast. <laughs> yeah, and, and with one a necklace, person, with an yeah. evil necklace. Uh, it's very uh, funny. Yeah. Um, I anyway, was I, I was reading this and thinking like, oh, like Chris Claremont just really likes to write about like rock music like he likes to go to a rock concert he likes to like mm-hmm. he, he sees a lot of beauty in that and that's special um and it i think as i've grown older a lot of that writing kind of just feels pretty cliche to me like i would rather just go to a concert than listen than read anybody describing a concert to me at this point um and then it fo- it's followed by three of some of the worst comic books i've ever read in my life so now i'm just looking at this comic <laughs> book and going ah welcome home jeremy <laughs> this is the good stuff well, well, this is the good shit man describing Leela Cheney's uh you know hot as a midsummer sun and fierce as a blood fight <laughs> uh do, doing her you know I, I would love to see what kind of music Liz, Liz Cheney plays like hear it you know because whatever it, the way that Chris Claremont talks about music here is like he's already 70 mm-hmm. you know even though the, he was a relatively young man at this point like this is how old rock dudes describe Woodstock I f- and shit. I feel like it's uh he it's someone like if they were 70 in 2022 and discovered Smashing Pumpkins and had never heard anything <laughs> about music before and was like, "Oh my god, y'all. I have I have found this is the find of the century. Listen to these chords. Listen to this slight like you would just go full fucking pitchfork, right? Like just full fucking yeah. pitchfork. Um she's rude. She's a rebel <laughs> and her concerts are a wonder be- to behold. When she steps on stage, it's with a spring in her step a wild joy in her eyes like it's you know chris claremont purple pl- prose mm-hmm. we've uh i thought you were gonna say when i read this i think chris claremont just really likes mind control because that's something that he never stopped doing <laughs> uh his amulet slash fed amulet slash mind control porn hub tag has never gone away like i remember when he came back to comics in the 2000s reading um extreme x-men and it all just being this like it's all magic necklaces all the way down. <laughs> like he loves a magic necklace that mind controls somebody, and he loves an evil version of his strong female characters. Like I went to uh, Comic Con this last weekend, mm-hmm. and there were these characters dressed up as something from an anime, and they had signs that were like, "I will, I will step on you for five dollars." Okay. And another one that's like, "I will slap you for four dollars." Mm-hmm. Uh, explicitly very horny. Uh, I'd never seen that before at a in, in a public thing. I just imagine that being like Chris Claremont just like walking up with a little spring in his step. <laughs> and it's like, hello, ladies. You know, as fierce as the midsummer sun. And then just like laying out $70. I was about to say, just, just, like, just popping a crisp yeah. $20 bill between two hands. Like, hey, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what, 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 what will you do for me? What will you do to me for this? I've got a group on. <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> it's from Stepnecker. Oh, dot com. No. oh no we've just invented yeah. something terrible and now it has to exist in yeah. the world um so Le- lina cheney is playing like she's she's headlining this yeah. whole thing but uh dazzler's in the back on the keys um yeah r- which is very funny to me for some reason i've just never she, she's just r- the, the person who drew this does not understand music because there are three microphones mm-hmm. pointed at dazzler uh that are none of them are pointed at her mouth <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> there's one point at the back of lila cheney's head did you see that one mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i think that's supposed to be in the background at the kick drum but it looks like there's just one miking her neck <laughs> absolutely yeah <laughs> like, yeah it's real good i um um what the fuck sorry my ipad updated and now like weird windows pop up when i'm just like trying to scroll mm. and it's just the most obnoxious thing in the world uh I, I do like the fact that she has like four keyboards though like she and oh, like, yeah. playing several at the same time like that's 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 pretty dope uh these are good keyboards too like i like knowing when this comic came out that Korg is worth a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is a good keyboard. <laughs> there's a there's a dude with a British accent that has developed a whole YouTube channel around like what this Korg can do. <laughs> I can guarantee I, you. I sub already. I, I've liked, <laughs> you, know exactly, and you know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> the, the, uh, uh, so while she's uh, you know, playing playing keyboard and they're talking about their they introduce the rest of the band, Connell Duran and Gray Havaro. Uh she's singing she looks over in a reflection there's like a mirror behind her as part of the stage setup and sees malice uh and while she's playing keyboard like malice is talking to her like you know uh spurring her on to jealousy like look they love Layla cheney they love her more than they ever loved dazzler you should take what's yours you know if, if you don't it's gonna be like you never existed you know playing on dazzler's like love of the spotlight and love of fame you know, mm-hmm. uh, and so Dazzler, like she's all sweat, like crazy sweating. Uh, and she's like, OK, done it. 
and uh, she she switched to the lead line and kicked her light powers in as Dazzler. So she's still just playing keyboard, but she's turning the the sound into light and sending off all these beams. So I'm not I know a lot about music. Um, I don't know yeah. a lot about creating music, and I, I don't know a lot about like music terminology, especially when you're in like a band. Is switch to the lead line a thing? <laughs> Like I can, I can imagine like if you were had like multiple guitarists on on stage and one was trying to like, like I'm thinking about like when that that show with Prince and Tom Petty and like somebody else and uh, oh, they're yeah. all playing while my guitar yeah. gently weeps and, and and Prince just is like fuck all y'all and just lays them down. Um, Dave Grohl's son is there for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> the um the, the I I if so it is a bigger concert thing than I've ever done. Okay. I don't know what this means. Okay, I was curious. Like it, it just made it sound like uh, I, I thought I thought it was garbage words to be honest with you. So. It, well, it also, it doesn't seem like the, the main problem here. You know, it's like she switched to the lead line and kicked her light powers in as Dazzler. And like, I don't know, her, her outing herself as Dazzler and a mutant is, seems to be the bigger problem. But the crowd's loving it. Like the crowd goes, yeah, the crowd shit, loves dude. it. Uh, they're, they're going crazy. Yeah. It's cool. Like, I, I would like to see this. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, she leaves and she's still like kind of uh, malice adult and Leela, you know, uh, you know, tracks her down in the backstage and is like, you know, if you do that again, you're fired. Like you're going to blow your cover, uh, this thing. And she, and she's still influenced by malice. And she's like, uh, you, that's not what you care about. You care that I'm better than you. You know, uh, I'm going to take over the spotlight. I'm not no longer going to do that. Yep. There's a, there's a great little exchange here where Leo, Leo is like, that's sanity or that's madness. And else, and, uh, Dazz was like, I say sanity. Just like, two normal people talking. Just two <laughs> two normal people saying normal things. Normal dialogue. That's madness. I say sanity. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've said that in my day to day life. Uh, Bringing it back. We jump over to Xavier's yeah. mansion where uh, Storm and Rogue and uh, Psylocke are all taking a look at. Um, Cerebro, excuse me, uh, because yes. it got destroyed in, in Sabretooth's attack on the mansion in the last issue, uh, and they're trying to repair it, but to quickly realize that nobody there knows how to repair stuff. So, like, we're just I'm, that's not even like a like a woman joke. I'm just like these are not the people who have ever repaired anything no. in an X Men comic book. I, I, I think it's really admirable that Rogue's like, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Carol Danvers like, knew some stuff about airplanes. Maybe this applies. I don't know. <laughs> That, that, that's more explanation than we get, uh, but that's basically <laughs> as close as it, it could be. Could be, uh, you know, they're they're angsting and stuff. Betty's like, oh, you know, I shouldn't have let Sabretooth get in, and they're like, you know, oh, you stood toe to toe with him. Be more careful, etc. Uh, they uh, they're saying like, you know, the Marauders are still going to attack us. Are we in any kind of shape? Like, we can't handle this. We're on the rebound. Uh, Storm's like, no, we we can't. We're fucked. Uh, and they all just kind of have to deal with it. Yeah. You know, which which I like. Again, this is one of the early issues I read of the or early crossovers I really liked because the X-Men suck ass in it. Um the uh they're looking for Wolverine and uh Betsy Braddock notices that Wolverine and uh what's her head Callisto has scheduled a training session in the danger room. Uh they go down there and they're not training, they're just fighting. They're straight up fighting. Uh and and yep. You know, Psylocke is a little worried at first. Like, oh, they're not holding back. And, and Storm is like, it's okay. Don't worry about it. They'll kill each other. It's no big oh. deal. And she's like, are you sure that that's okay? She's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry about it. I fought them both. They're both weak as hell. They're not going to yeah. kill each other. Yeah. <laughs> they're not going to do anything. I'm incredibly here for Callisto's hammer pants. Oh, man. Uh, so good. This. The the, yeah, the Showing that, that much ankle with the hammer pants is a bold step, dude. I love it. It's incredible. Like, yeah. having a cinch in at, like, the shin. Oh, so good. Right here. Um, oh, I also really, like really that... Uh, there's a moment where uh, she throws a, a dagger at him and he blocks it with his uh, um, claws and is like, you know, that would have that 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 would have worked if I hadn't blocked it or whatever. Like, again, we talked about this a couple episodes ago where, you know, Wolverine nowadays can literally recover from a single cell. But like he was legitimately kind of concerned about like, a th- you know, being stabbed in the throat <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he might just also not want to be stabbed in the throat to it's hard to tell exactly what would happen like whether that would kill him uh it it's uh it would have at least got past his bones like that she was talking about his bones mm-hmm. before that you know making him bleed out uh she's gonna go hunt them the marauders you know or she's she wants to wolverine says like are you gonna do that and she's like no i i gotta take care of who lives you know i can't go hunting as much as i want to yeah 
Uh, yeah. There's a little bit of business uh, here with uh, Betsy Braddock putting together a, a tube. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and uh, Wolverine walking up on her uh, with his claws out, causing her to have a PTSD saber tooth flashback and zap him. Yeah. Um, I dig this. I think this is like a good moment of, uh, I mean, you shouldn't scare people, obviously. Like this is not, I, I don't think this would be valid in real life. Claws. But, yeah. Yeah. Like, but, uh, Wolverine. but, uh, I feel like, you know, him kind of testing her, uh, based and trying to figure out like how she's going to react in these situations and try to get a better read on her. Um, not because it's like a super cool thing to do, but because like we're a team and we're under siege. Like this is a bad place. Like yeah. we're, we, we need to know what you're, what's going to happen if you're, if we're all over depending on you to do something. Um, yeah. And that's when they get the phone call that something is up with Allison Blair uh, and they, it's time to yeah. go to Leela Chena calls. Yeah. I love, I love Wolverine answering the phone. Xavier's, Xavier's. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very funny. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And this point, Allison Blair w- is not an X-Men was just an ally. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dazzler had a solo series at this point. Like Dazzler was a thing, but not an X-Men. Yeah. This is joy- her joining. Yes. Yeah. You know? Uh, setting the stage for Australia X-Men, which comes out of Fall of the Mutants, which is uh, the X-Men part of the next crossover we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, so they uh, they go to Dallas to this next uh, thing the next evening. And then there's a word here. j Rams. Yeah, dude. <sighs> that is the name of this club. It's awful. j Rome's. j I think is this supposed to be like Jer- like a stylized version of Jerome. Maybe J Rome's. I can see that. Okay, so if it's yeah. like a Jerome and yeah. see people call him J Rome or something like that, I can because I get a lot of uh, J Dogs or that kind of stuff just with my sure. own J name. Um, it's not spelled like this though. This is a really weird. It's a really weird spelling. Know, it feels like Chris Claremont being an old man, but maybe it's a real club. I also it, this yeah, is followed know. by a description that says a private club catering to the chic, glitter glitterati rich, stylish, jaded trendoids on the prowl for thrills <laughs> with money to burn. Trendoids. That's yeah. <laughs> it's the uh, goddamn. Uh, I love an old man writing youth culture. Oh, dude, I mean, like, hey, kids. go to a club. I just, I'm begging you, go to a club. <laughs> <laughs> what <are> you? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking trendoids. Um, I, I, get, I can't, I can't get in. There's too many trendoids. There's too many trendoids. They won't let an old writer yeah. in like me. Maybe if I told them that yeah, I, I wrote for the X-Men. <laughs> no, I don't think that's yeah, going to work. Maybe if I gave them $20 to step on my neck. I don't think that's going to work um, either. Um, yeah. Uh, Dazzler's just singing her heart, her heart out. She is just like full on yeah. mutant display, lighting up the whole stage. Uh, and the X-Men get there um, dressed in X-Men fashion clothes, which it's remarkable <sighs> how many years it's taken me to realize that like Dean Winchester just dresses like Wolverine from the 80s. Uh, but it's absolutely I, I, true. <laughs> the, the, the incognito X-Men are so good. Yes. Like this is them fitting in. Uh huh. <laughs> they always look like a micro cowboy and then like an S and M weather goddess and then uh, a couple people in jumpsuits. D- fucking hysterical, uh, dude. Yeah, you know, it's so good. I love Cowboy Wolverine. Um, so they're, they're all kind of impressed by this, and I love this little bit. Wolverine's characterization is always impressing me in comics because he's he can cons- he's considered to be very generic. Like people hate Wolverine, but he's always pretty good mm-hmm. in stuff we read. Um, and I love this little, this little bit where he's like, what are we doing here? <laughs> you know, like we don't, we're not here to stop mutants from using their powers. She's an adult, do you know? Yeah. What do you, like, this is stupid. Yeah. We, this is not a villain. Um, she's not robbing a bank. Like, you know, she's not, she's not killing yeah. people. She's not killing mutants right now. Yeah, um, it's her choice. Yeah. Uh, and Storm's like, well, that's true, but we at least had to let her know about the Marauders. Yeah. You know, a um, little late for that storm. And this is when Dazzler Could've called her. A little courtesy call. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. fax her. It says clear Claremont. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, send her yeah. a fax. <laughs> a fax spilling through the airwaves like <laughs> Jupiter's thunder. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so she she sees this and uh, she attacks the X Men because she's malice pilled at this point. Yes. As uh, zaps them, they're all surprised by this. Like, oh, you know, we're friends. What are you doing? Uh, but she just really, you know, fucks everybody up. I forgot about this. Like she tries, she blinds everybody. And I forgot that at this point, Betsy Braddock had, uh, bionic eyes. So weird. Dude. I knew that at some point, but I forgot. Yeah. She's got cyber eyes. I can't remember the story behind that. I, I knew it at one point. How far are um, we from, um, the, the body change for Psylocke? Does that happen in the nineties? Uh, that happens in the nineties. Yeah. Or no, 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 that doesn't happen. It happens at the fall of the mutants. Sorry. Like no. she comes out of, so she does not come out of the siege perilous. That's what happens. Uh, okay. thing. Yeah. yeah. So she got teleported to a different zone, I think. And that's a, uh, yeah, it was the siege perilous though. I'm pretty sure. Unless they got retconned. 
Um, but like at the end of in fall of the mutants, the X-Men are in Dallas, uh, fighting, um, what is it? Like the, the we, they shoot, we show them at the end of this issue. Um, three weird goofballs, Stonewall, <laughs> Super Saber, and like another guy. And uh, there's also a thing where I think Forge's demon spirit mm. is uh, is taking over Forge's tower. Yeah. And to get away, they go through the Siege Perilous, which is a weird portal that changes you. Uh, it's how Nimrod turns into Bastion. It's how Havoc got his mind erased and ended up on Genosha, leading to the Extinction Agenda, one of my all time favorite crossovers. Like, it's a it's a big thing. I'm pretty sure that's how Psylocke changed, but it's been really, really retconned a bunch because there's also Kwanin and Revanche. Like, there's a lot of characters to Psylocke's whole thing. You uh, you could have just literally been lying to me right there, and I would have not known. Like as soon as you said Guanin, I was like, I don't think that this dude's being serious anymore. Yeah. I think he's I think he's playing me for a fool. <laughs> <laughs> You're having a laugh. As soon as anybody brings up a revanche, I kind of lose it when I'm trying to think about Psylocke. <laughs> <laughs> like I just forget like, oh yeah, there's a revenge about mm-hmm. just another Psylocke who is running around. Um, um, they fight. So they, uh, yep. Dazzler pretty quickly knocks out just about everybody except for Rogue, who she has a, uh, a special bond with because uh, Rogue back in the day tried to kill her. Um, and yep. so she, she goes after Rogue, not realizing that Storm is behind her, um, grabs onto her. And as she's holding Allison back, uh, Malice jumps from Allison to Wolverine. And now Wolverine has a little sexy collar on. And now Wolverine starts attacking everybody. I love the idea of this magic necklace that just zaps around. Yeah. You know, and this is the, this is the, the last person you want to have, you know, have this thing. It's- you know, he, uh, he kind of tries to stay in character or the Malice version of him. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, oh, if Blondie wants a scrap, I'll give her one. You know, pretending like he's still mad about. Uh, being attacked right like going after yeah, being Allison. Attacked. yeah absolutely yeah malice isn't uh, stupid so he, he, he's going for the kill here mm-hmm. yeah uh what were you saying sorry i didn't mean to cut you off oh no i just said malice isn't stupid like she's she's playing the x-men against oh. each other uh and this and it works because you know allison like shoots eye beams at wolverine and like he goes down and that's when uh storm just like does the cross punch and just fucking laser out um and now two of the x-men yep. are down um we zip over outside where there's a dude who's got a mustache. <laughs> and this he, guy. He's one of yeah, the police, muties. man. Muties. Yeah. We got to keep the civilians back, especially the press. I, I, I cannot remember who this, uh, this guy is. Uh, stuff, for, stuff for later. This is the last X-Men we're reading for now, and I haven't read the stuff after it mm-hmm. in a little bit. Uh, Rogue gets the magic necklace because she came down to check in on Wolverine. Uh, and that's also somebody you don't want to have have the magic necklace, but she uses it to try to escape. Uh, she runs out, or not to escape, to run out to where the humans are and start fucking people up. And she's doing uh, PR damage. She's like, hey, I'm Rogue. Hey, I'm <laughs> Rogue. I'm you from know? the like, X-Men. I'm with the X-Men. <laughs> yeah, like she literally says that. Which that that's great. Uh, more, more mind control villains need to do that kind of shit. Yeah. Absolutely, I love it when my I love it when this happens when somebody is just like, "Hey, that's that secret this dude was trying to hide from everybody. Here it is. <laughs> Let's just yep. tell everybody." That's what I would do. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Betsy Braddock figures it out. She noticed Malice mm-hmm. in there. Uh, she's one of the Marauders, um, and kind of explains what's happening here. Basically, um, you know, they're like, "Oh, we have to get out there and and, and stop this. We're going to take out Malice." And if that plan fails, don't worry, Malice is not going to get away. Wolverine implying that he'll kill Rogue if he needs to, mm-hmm. uh, which is his answer to everything. Uh, she's out there flipping over cars, giving interviews. You know, like, I'm in the X-Men. Rogue. Rogue's my <laughs> name. Uh, I'm destroying everything. Uh, really good. Not Rouge, Rogue. And they're like, why did you have to? You said it. Like, it was that we weren't confused. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, I wasn't reading it. Hold on. Do you think that I read your words? Is this some kind of meta? Like, did Grant Morrison write you all of a sudden? Oh, no. Like, yeah. Um, Dal, uh, Dazzler comes out and starts zapping her. Yep. And they fight. Uh, distracting long enough for uh, Psylocke. To try to get try to get in, uh, he's unable to, or she's unable to. And, but uh, Malice ends up leaving uh, Rogue here and going into Storm, which is what they wanted because Storm has yep. the uh, she she has the belief in herself. She has the you know the her her own sense of self is so strong, her will is so strong that she's able to overcome Malice and rip the necklace off of her. 
Uh, and so yep. she's able to overcome this, uh, which is, you know, this, this plays into some of the stuff we saw with her and Callisto in the last couple of issues of, you know, Storm doubting herself, but ultimately finding her strength on her own. And like, this is a big Storm arc yeah. in general of just like, oh, I can, I'm still a strong X-Men leader even without my powers. So this is, yeah. this is all this good. Is good. She's, yeah. is, she got her groove back. Malice didn't count on her having the vest, <laughs> the super leader vest. The super leader vest, yes. You know, uh, real good. You know, uh, you, I like this this ending for defeating a, a mind control villain. You know, um, she rips off the necklace uh, there. Um, it looks like, you know, she's like, uh, the, you know, the more it pushed me for, the, the better it made me able to resist you. She's talking to the necklace. Yes. At this point, <laughs> um, you cannot seize me. You cannot tempt me with what I already possess. You know, we got to later. Uh, There's a guy giving an interview, uh, basically, and uh, they're looking for the X-Men. Uh, because Malice framed them and the X-Men aren't that popular anyway. Um, Allison's looking in and he's like, you know, this sucks. Like, I'm going to turn myself in. This wasn't Rogue's fault. And Storm's like, it wasn't your fault. <laughs> you know, yeah, you like, were Malice, remember? You, There's an evil necklace at play. You were literally possessed. Like, we we did the thing. You were literally possessed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's very funny. Um, but they, you know, yeah. they're like, hey, you, you, you know, Allison's worried about, like, surviving another attack. And Storm is like, hey, you, you maybe you won't, but you definitely won't. You definitely will survive if you're with us. Like, you should come back to and hang out with us. And she's like, oh, you'd still accept me. And they're like, yeah, of course. And then the most bizarre thing in this world happens. <laughs> it's like something completely, it, uh, like, out of, I don't know what is happening in this. Uh, Wolverine is, like, listening and then just grabs Storm's hair and, like, goes to stab her, like, throwing her on the ground. And they think that, like, it's Malice, but, like, no, it's just Wolverine. And she's like, and then he just stops, and he's like, oh, sorry about that. I, uh, I had a moment. <laughs> so, so I think, I, I don't, again, I didn't keep reading Uncanny after this. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff I've read before, some of it I haven't. I assume this is building up to something where Malice is still in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, like, the Malice is either secretly in there, or Malice controlling Storm made Storm do the whole, like, I'm actually good. You know, I'm fine. Uh, thing I assume that Wolverine's right. Yeah, you know, not they should have summarily executed Storm, but there's more stuff happening here. That's not what we end on. We end on Mustache Guy, this Life at the Outpost cowboy guy, uh, talking about this and just stalking them. We don't know who they are, but who they are yet. Uh, but he says, you know, if if that heart's been touched by malice, all that talk, all the arguments uh, in the world won't put things right again. Face the fact, Storm, you're lost. I won. And old soldiers. Uh, oh no, no, this guy's wearing this, the malice. This guy's necklace. malice. Yeah, like, I was just, I just noticed. I, I didn't notice that the first time. Like, I, I didn't notice that either. So malice can't be in storm, which I thought was a really good like explanation of why Wolverine just freaked out, or maybe, maybe she was and she hopped over. I don't know, dude. I, uh, I, I don't. Know. Know. Yeah, I, I, I didn't keep reading it because the next issue, uh, they introduce. I love when uh, X Men where they just have villains that nobody's ever done anything with. Like every once in a while, they fought some real fucking dorks, you know. And and they repurpose everything, but like if you look at the cover for the next one, introducing Stonewall <laughs> Super Saver and the Crimson Commando, dude, dude, this is straight out of the Venture Brothers. I know Venture Brothers like is like, straight out of the Uncanny X Men, but like this is insanity. Wow, I, I am. I can't believe this is. These are the guys they. I'm pretty sure these are the guys they fight in Fall of the Mutants. Like they have to go down to Dallas to fight Super Saber. Like, look at that guy. He's he's a little speedster guy. He's wearing a dorky little like biplane helmet, and he's got a picture. He's fast, and he's got a picture of a saber on his shirt. That's how you can tell he's super saber. Oh my god, dude! This, I mean, I, the the crimson commando incredible. guy. This his eyeshadow alone, and the, that weird yeah. stare. Oh my lord! Is it his his thick butt? <laughs> like he's got a, he's got a taut <laughs> runner's butt. The crimson commando for an old man. I I don't remember what's up with these guys. I remember reading comics with them. Uh, but yeah, this is dorky and weird. I understand them wanting to do something that wasn't the Marauders who are like super grim dark, you know, mm -hmm. after this, like maybe they wanted to have them fight some, some technicolor, you know, super villain ass super villains, but feels like an overcorrection to me. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, going into the bad comics, yeah. uh, we're talking about X factor, uh, 24 X factor, 24 and X factor, 26 are not as bad as they can be. 25 is the nexus point of shit i think um it, to me it's so this is this is where angel becomes archangel um or this is where yep. he's introduced as archangel i should say because i feel like that's this this whole process happened in a couple of previous issues but this is the first time we've seen it um and it, you're, you're right in that this isn't like terrible 
the the thing that makes 25 just terrible is that it's just 40 fucking pages like there's no reason yeah. to make it 40 pages like these being 22 pages or whatever it goes by relatively quickly uh the the next issue being 40 and, and is just quick and fun like yeah. campy super campy apocalypse you know there's there's some real fun goof shit that happens with us and the running the, uh, the running thread of uh beast having been touched by pestilence and now any time that he get, he uses his strength, he gets dumber. Is fucking hysterical. Yes. Like th- this arc is, <laughs> and it's and they they try to like yeah. really wring some pathos out of it at the end to make it like super sad, where he's all like, crying and in tears and, and terrified. But I was just cracking up the entire time. Like this it, is the coolest, stupidest thing I've read. Good. Yeah, it's so funny. Like the the thing about this this zone is it's great for stupid ass X Men shit and and designs. Mm-hmm. Like everybody is a fashion nightmare in these comics and i'm like 100 percent here for it um the uh so th- that part and it's worth noting so this doesn't happen right after mutant massacre this is the next major crossover some stuff happened between uh this and the last time we checked out on x factor so like angel was in the hospital uh their x factors human liaison the person who warren worked with uh cameron hodge arranged for angel's wings to be amputated and then arranged for his plane to blow up, which X Factor this time thought it was a suicide. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of the important context uh, there. It turns out Apocalypse grabbed him. We'll find out. And it shows it right on the cover. Uh, we get to see Archangel. Uh, just what a very cool design, I think. Oh, yeah. Always thought Archangel looks cool as hell. This is, um, I, I love the way, like, his little flight trails. I love his wings. Like, yeah. this, was, this was primo, like, just fucking candy for me, man. I, I love this so much. It looks really good. Um, it feels like we started in the middle of a story, but it, the, it starts with uh, X Factor. Oh, they've also taken on Caliban, and Caliban wears a mask that looks like a robot. Yeah. And since Caliban speaks in the third person, it really feels like Caliban has been replaced by a Caliban robot mm-hmm. during this. I kept thinking of him as Calibot, but I'm like, oh no, he's just a person. They just decided to dress him as a robot. Very funny to me. Uh, it also looks like he's been working out. I, yeah. Uh, but they've been teleported here. Yep. We didn't miss anything. They just got teleported against their will to a random zone. Yep. Uh, yeah. Caliban starts detecting uh, some mutant presences. Uh, one, which is yep. unknown but familiar. One new. And three, whom X-Factor have faced before, which is the three horsemen of death. Uh, so they, they, they know they're in trouble. They know they're in a hostile world. Uh, Gene throws up a telekinetic shield against everybody. And they war in Beast like, hey if you if you use your super strength like you're gonna be super dumb and he's just like nah let me just rip this wall off for no reason <laughs> i'm just gonna do it fam. <laughs> they uh they explain it way later what's happening because it's like after you had that run in with pestilence and it's like what what disease do you get that makes you stupider but stronger whenever you lift weights <laughs> you know but but it turns out it's interacting with a, another plot he got kidnapped by somebody who was trying to make him human um, so it's those two things magically connecting, which I think is fine. Um, he's like, you know, we have to tell these people what we think about kidnapping. Uh, smashes the thing. I love uh, Cyclops just also smashing a random wall. Yeah, fuck these like, walls. They're just rioting. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. You can't really blame them. Uh, like, I guess if you teleported me into a random, like, spaceship, I'd be like, fuck this spaceship. Let's yeah. go. Absolutely. Uh, you know, he's like, we'll tear this place apart to get our answers. Apocalypse shows up like, this is my ship. It floats invisible above the Earth. Uh, you're beyond rescue. And we get to see the outside of Apocalypse's ship, which looks like a gigantic pair of like future binoculars. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, real cool. You, you know, and he's like, oh, we've met before, but I want to study you more. And he starts pontificating. Uh, this works for me, though, because one, uh, I think Apocalypse at the time that he was released, you know, like kind of a refreshing motivation. Like he's he's real campy, but he's not just like I'm gonna take over the world. He's saying like no no there should be these fights. Yeah, like he's a really good villain for the X Men. We talked about that before, but somebody's like no 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 humans versus mutants is good. Like not because humans are bad, but because that's gonna make you guys awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And he we're we're going through the whole like we're going through the hits where he's talking about like you know I know yep. about your dream of peace about Xavier. He like projects an image of Xavier. Um, as they start, try to start blasting him, he's like jumping around on his huge shapeshifter arms, which is just fucking great. I love this a lot. Like uh, his little anvil arms are super, super uh, dorky. Yeah. Uh, very fun. He starts his like big smile. Yeah. Yeah. He's Look just, how happy he is when he's smashing beast. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so, so funny. Good. And I can't help but read this in the, um, in the, you know, animated series voice of apocalypse. Like that dude just nailed yeah. it so much. That, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. 
Oh uh, man, so good. Um, and then he goes into he kind of he kind of you know wipes the floor with them very quickly, and then he goes into the history yeah. of apocalypse. Puts on this PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah. time for <laughs> time to do a presentation, everybody. <laughs> Love it when this happens. And he's talking about where he's been through history, and basically, like you know, again, this is all cliche stuff to us now as old X Men fans, but this was very cool. Yeah, like. He's saying that you know, he's been around forever and he was worshipped as gods in a bunch of different places. He name checks all these real gods like in Egypt. He was set the god of death like that was him, you know, and they show like this version of set that kind of looks like him. They show him in a kind of like an Aztec area where there's like this Aztec version of Apocalypse that looks like really great, mm-hmm. you know, and weird and spooky. Like he was Kali Ma, which is the. Uh, the God that they're worshiping in temple of doom, mm-hmm. you know, it's all great. It's all great stuff. I love that. He's almost uh, always like got kind of got some blue tinge, but when like, when he's in India, it's just like, he's got a snake. He just has a, a whole yep. ass snake coming off of him. <laughs> yep. Very funny. Uh, it's, it's incredibly good. And he's, uh, he's saying, you know, an X factor, like the fact that you were posed, you know, your whole thing, you're posing as mutant hunters, all that stuff that served my, my needs. Uh, and I love them just being like a mistake. We were being tricked, betrayed. <laughs> uh, no, kinda. Yeah, <laughs> fucking dopes, These fucking idiots. <laughs> like, like uh, just the, yeah. this whole thing is just like I, we 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 said before when we start covering this X Factor stuff. Like the idea of them pretending to be humans that capture mutants, and so like, but they're really helping the mutants, but they're actually like making the whole situation worse for mutants in the world by like having this group of organized humans hunting down mutants and like making that okay. Like, what in the fuck? <laughs> like, what is going it's on? A- and for them to be it like, should not take them this long to realize. Exactly, yeah. For them to go like, oh, uh, the goddess. Okay, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that was bad. Uh, so he explains, you know, uh, about Warren Worthington. He's like, you know, speaking of betrayal, that happened. Uh, he, his fortune has been stolen by Cameron Hodge. Bring, introducing the right, which are Cameron Hodge's like force of robots with the smiley faces. I've always liked the, those robots. Like in terms of robots that fight the X-Men, Sundals are obviously number one. These little short kings with big smiley faces painted on their masks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've always thought the right were really cool. Uh, and he's like, yeah, the right is great too, because they're also, you know, sowing this dissent. This is what we want. Um, you know, I may have allowed this to happen because it served my purposes, but you're the ones who did it. Exactly. You fucked up Warren because you were blind to humans. Like you, you know, didn't think about uh, Cameron Hodge being evil and fucking him over. Your, your trust did this um join me this finally this finally pisses them off enough to attack them when they realize oh it's he, he just teleported away uh, uh yeah and that's when he brings out <laughs> his out. uh his three dorks of the apocalypse all of these dudes have terrible Dude. fucking haircuts um i the haircut crew i love them so much like i've always loved this crew i don't know why <laughs> like i just think that they're uh what there's the thing that happens during this uh that's very funny where x factor immediately starts ignoring caliban even when Caliban is saying things about how he's going to betray them, <laughs> like he just walks up to Apocalypse, like Apocalypse, there's not peace that Caliban desires, but vengeance on the ones who betrayed my people. And the X-Men just don't give a shit. Yeah, they're like, whatever. Like earlier, he interjected something, too. And they're just like, oh, what's that guy about? <laughs> you know, uh, the dorks come out, uh, famine, war and pestilence. They put on their cool masks. Mm hmm costume nightmares on their gigantic mechanical dog horses i love these I, like which, these are the dumbest thing i've ever seen but this is like dude, genuinely so much fun like this is so much fun. i love them yeah like it, it is so everything is a fashion nightmare in this in like the best possible way uh it's real good uh apocalypse sends them out to go fight the city <laughs> like he's like you know uh go, go kill manhattan i love the way you say that go uh, fight the city not not go destroy the city or like don't go marauding just go fight the city absolutely <laughs> go punch it uh the x-men can't you know they, they just keep saying we don't want to fight we just want peace uh they're gonna keep saying that uh over and over and over uh the they get out uh they they, they do a brief tussle mm-hmm. here uh, the the horsemen versus X Men. They're trying to stop. All while Apocalypse just hangs out to the side, like doing color commentary with a big goofy grin. I, I mean, it's this is the parts where I start getting a little uh, annoyed at the, at the at the writing in this comic book because it's like it's a lot. Like one page is you know I can show you that spark within yourself that could grow to consume all, and the next page is a natural cycle from war to improve technology to growth to greed, and greed leads to war. And I'm like, Jesus Christ! Like having to fight in front of this dude must be obnoxious as hell. It's nonstop. Like Chris Claremont gets all the reputation for purple prose, but 
uh, Louis Simon said, this is, these are real fucking talky fights. Yeah. One of the things I was thinking about is that like now in comics, more modern comics, people don't talk as much when they fight, you know, that 25, that 40 page issue that we're doing after this would go by really quick because it'd be all about spectacle. Mm-hmm. You know, it'd be big double page, cool illustrations as opposed to just nonstop, you know, pitting their philosophical Pokemon against each other. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Cyclops does the move. Uh, he knocks down some some rubble onto war uh, from because they're wearing special suits that stop Jean Grey from just ending the fight. Uh, there, uh, famine pops up and zaps Iceman, turning him into weird skinny Iceman, <laughs> uh, which I, I love. Uh, this is just very much uh, uh, making him very weak. Uh, gangly Mario from Mario Maker One, you know, tall, lanky Mario, yeah, lanky Mario. Mario. Yeah, uh, yeah, this is just like that's famine's power is to turn you into that version of yourself. And I'm like, hey, famine, <laughs> come see, come through, my man. I want to come see this. I'm way into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, throughout this whole fight, so she, you know, she fucks up Iceman. Iceman to get past it, uh, the right, the the human people had made a uh, inhibitor belt because he's too powerful, so he takes it off to fight fight back um all the time apocalypse is kind of just musing on the side and caliban is doing little poses and watching i uh, I, uh this I, first one he's bent over looking over it like it's a really like come mount me stare yeah yeah from um, caliban it's, it's very it's, <laughs> a, it's, it's, it's a little bit horny um but i like the way that this works like that this the bottom like eighth panel of ever or bottom eighth the bottom panel of the page which is about eighth of eighth of the page big like is just a little sliver of like caliban reacting to the things that are happening on the page and i think that's kind of a cool like through line i guess yeah i like and then on the left apocalypse you know it's it, he's listening to apocalypse yeah like it, it's set up in frames in an interesting way apocalypse commenting on the left and caliban reacting on the bottom while the action happens on the rest of the page it's um it's interesting because uh, like comparing this to Claremont, like you mentioned, like he gets all like the hate for the purple pros. Um, but at least it's interesting. Like at least he was trying to be set himself apart. Like I feel like this Louis Simonson stuff. It's just it's very it's very straightforward and direct, and there's not like a lot of flavor to it whatsoever. So like it's really hard to pay attention to it nowadays. <laughs> like when I was reading it, I like kept skimming it, and I was like, no, no, I'm actually trying. I have to do a podcast about this. I have to read it. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. but it's just like you, your 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 eyes just like glaze over it automatically. It's it's real difficult. It ends up actually, you know, just to because people yell at me for this, but it reminds me of anime. Like characters keep saying the same things over and over. You know, and when I say that, people are like, oh, no, you don't mean anime. You mean shonen anime. anime. And I'm like, yeah, I <laughs> okay. guess that's what it reminds sure, me of. Yeah. Like, it reminds me of Dragon Ball. Like, it, characters are just saying the same things over and over, back and forth. And uh, when people try to gotcha me about not liking anime, they're like, oh, you like superhero comics. And I'm like, yeah, but I like the good ones. <laughs> you know, I, I don't like it when, when, when people just say the same things back and forth over and over for a whole issue. Like that's annoying no matter who's doing it. Yeah. You know, and, and not to get like into the weeds, but there's also like an aspect of nostalgia to all of the stuff that we're covering. Right. Like we grew, yeah, we grew up 100%. with comics without access to anime. Like I didn't see an anime until probably like late nineties, probably like that was my first six. I was like, yeah. Oh, I guess it makes sense that other countries have cartoons. <laughs> like I just, it never occurred to me <laughs> until that point in my life. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's also, I just have a lot of affection for this iconography. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's just good to me. It's what we like. Um, yeah. Uh, Apocalypse is real into beast, uh, in his super strong himbo mode. Uh, pestilence is there. They're kind of explaining all that stuff. Pestilence. I'm going to get you this time. Really give it to you you know, and, and make you ultimately uh, lose it. We get some real weird drawings of apocalypse where he looks like the Supreme intelligence. Yeah. Just big, just where he fills up the whole frame. His whole face turns into his whole face. <laughs> it's just really bizarre. It, this panel on the left makes it look like apocalypse's torso is apocalypse's face. Like he's wearing a shirt with his face stretched on the front, like March. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's supposed to be two different frames, but they don't really do a thing to, to differentiate them. Uh, it's real good. Yeah. Meanwhile, Beast is continuing to use his strength, uh, which everyone is telling him is going to make him dumb. Um, and he's just like trying to trying to beat up on this dude uh, until eventually yeah. Apocalypse kind of breaks in and it's like with more words. The price of peace is greater. You, Scott Summers, your wife and son were killed. <laughs> you suspect that humans did it because she had married you, a mutant. Like it's just going on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, but they, they've taken out the horsemen who are chumps. Like the horsemen have never been a match. Uh, at this point, Apocalypse plays his, his card here and introduces Archangel, you know, uh, giving them death, his fourth horseman, finally. Uh, this picture of him presenting 
Archangel with like the game show smile. <laughs> like I, I am so here for this. It's so good. <laughs> Just, it's so. It's like Mister Sinister shit. <laughs> I love it. Uh, because whenever anybody wears a mask, characters in comic books are super slow on the uptake. They don't recognize it as Archangel, even though they're like, "Oh, he's making fun of Angel." <laughs> like, it's a mockery. I was um, Cyclops is like the dialogue here is so weird. Like, we death Warren. Angel was we joyous life. That thing's a mockery. <laughs> like the, it takes them a while to get this. <laughs> I also had it's even after he takes off his mask. Like they see like after he takes off his mask, Beast is like, Who are you anyway? <laughs> it's so good. I'd forgotten that he starts out with the mask. Like I just had totally forgotten about that. Um so like when he yeah. shows up with the skull, the gull skull mask, uh for all the world like looking a like, a, like a like a I was yeah. say looking like a Lucador. Um yeah, it's it's very funny to me. Yeah. Uh, they're like, oh, you died. You committed suicide in a way I did. And he wipes the floor with the X-Men. Uh, and this is where are to Archangel's new abilities. He flies around, but as opposed to just flying around, he can now shoot little feathers off his, his wings. And these feathers have like a neurotoxin that paralyzes you. Yeah. So he basically just takes out the X-Men, uh, paralyzing them all. As a kid, this was like absolutely terrifying to me. Like, I just think the idea oh, yeah. of like these dudes shooting a bunch of stuff and just shredding me, like I just could not stand it. Like I was like, oh, this dude is. And in the comics, it's always really done. Like it's always done really well. I love the as they all like land around the X-Men. Like it's really good. I love it. Gene tries to get through to him, you know, and he recognizes Genie, but he can't, you know, it doesn't doesn't snap through. While they're out, they strap them all to these tables uh, here. Uh, apocalypse is still going on. We're going to keep, you know, heaven or hell, salvation or destruction on the side of angels and demons. What does it matter? You know, in the end, they're the same. Uh, basically saying, you know, you're going to join us mm-hmm. uh, at this point. Uh, and there's a cool little bit here where Warren doesn't want to listen to Gene trying to, to get him to break good. Uh, so he goes to Apocalypse to get his mask. Like he's, you know, when he's the mask, he's, he's death. Yes. You know, he, he wants to have that on because it's a, a security blanket, you know, for him, mm-hmm. helps him out. Uh, him and the horsemen go off to fight the city, as we mentioned, uh, there. And, uh, the X-Men are still strapped to a table. They forgot about Caliban, <laughs> which is <laughs> to their, uh, you know, and, and so do, you know, they kept, we didn't cause they kept showing them, but nobody cares about Caliban. Exactly. Yeah. He walks up to the X-Men and like Cyclops, oh, this is great. You can free us. And Caliban's like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, sorry, buddy. Nope. Uh, he's like, you know, can you, Apocalypse, if I join you, can you make me as strong as death? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, betraying the X-Men. And Apocalypse is down. He's like, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and yeah. and we end this with a quote from Revelations, which seems a little bit on the nose. Uh, and <laughs> watching the four horsemen of the apocalypse go ta- go fight Manhattan, <laughs> which is going to be what on, happens. On their, the, on their dork horses on the dork with their horses. silly outfits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's good stuff. Uh, the next issue, the one hey, that we keep talking shit about, is X Factor twenty five. We uh, big round number, so it's a million years long. Yeah, it's entirely too long. Like we've said, um, I do like the fact that they're knocking down the Empire State Building in the back of the cover, though. That's always fun. Um, yeah, yeah, it happens in the issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, cover's great. You know, this is a super cool cover. Um, but yeah, we we have to move through this quicker than it moves. Uh, there's, or I'll lose my fucking mind. It's, like, th- there's it's, nothing to say on a lot of the, a lot of it. It's, um, you know? and like the thing that is, that's frustrating to me about this thing is like this huge stuff happens. They drop a spaceship in Manhattan. Like that's a big <laughs> deal. And like we get most yep. of that through, like it just, it's, it's, it's a lot of just people flying around and like hitting one another or not hitting one another is whatever the situation may need. Um, and, and so we start out just where we left off with the, the horsemen going towards Manhattan and we see like the results on what's happening on the people. Like pestilence is riding around and everybody turns into lanky versions of themselves. Um, and then yep. there's some more dialogue about Cameron Hodge. Uh, we see, we see president Reagan in a cowboy hat, which is always a good time. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Comic the, books. The, the important part is he's uh, explaining that they're starting a mutant registration act, you know, uh, there. So he's like, you know, the humans, they don't trust you. But they're they're just saying things out loud that not only do we know, but the characters in the scene know mm-hmm. as well. You know, he's like, I gave him wings. It's like, we fucking figured it out by now, man. Um, Old comic thing where they just assume you haven't read any comic before and this is your first comic. Yes. Uh, this pisses off Hank. So he uh, he doesn't break out. He th- he grabs a, a handful of metal 
uh, just rips metal out with his hand like it's dirt and then flings a rock at Iceman's little inhibitor belt to turn it off. Let's call it what it is and just say that it's a chastity yeah. belt. Like, that's that's just what it yeah, is. It's, it's, it's <laughs> a little chastity belt. This stuff is gigantic ice dick from ramrodding his way around town. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's real silly that he does that instead of just breaking out. Uh, but he he breaks them out. How much does shorter it. will this comic book be if that didn't have the thing where Hank does anything and Apocalypse is like, you know, by doing that, you're making yourself stupider. <laughs> <laughs> and then Iceman says it. And then Cyclops says it. It's, I mean, it's, and then Gene says it's it. ridiculous, dude. It goes on and on and on and yeah. on. Um, finally, what ends up happening is Apocalypse baits them into um, exploding part of the, they call I think they call it the gyroscope later, but they, they basically damage the ship enough that it starts falling. Yeah. All part of his plan. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this uh when this happens uh gene and uh cyclops get out to go do search and rescue and fight you know the horsemen beast and iceman are still on the ship Mm -hmm. at this point uh they go down there uh they're gonna go fight pestilence but pestilence runs down the sewer to go fight power pack uh in another power pack issue but don't worry power pack will show up oh yes Uh, (laughs) thank god do not do not worry for a second uh Cyclops at this point is all back. Like he's like, I'm gonna go fight war, you're gonna go fight famine, and he grabs her and kisses her. You know, and she's like, Welcome back. Because the <laughs> the way that Cyclops is, <laughs> this is fucking weird. My favorite thing in the whole world happens though in this comic. Like I hate this comic. Uh-huh. Uh famine's destroying everybody, making everybody skinny. She gets Jean Grey, which Jean Grey gets really weak. She knocks out famine, but then has to go crawl towards a bunch of loose ground hot dogs and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> like Jean Grey the Phoenix gets knocked out and has to go eat like there there's four hot dogs and three buns pictured here. Just imagine Jean Grey shoveling hot dogs from the ground into her mouth to regain her strength. The MCU could it's never so ever me. do this. Yeah. Uh, I I man, I would pray that it would. Dude, it, it's like a it's like a beat 'em up. It's like how you regain yeah, health, health and turtles and dime. Yeah, it's 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 trash turkey, right? It's just trash turkey yeah. that you get out of the trash cans. <laughs> it's, uh, it's extremely funny, dude. Like, and the the, the thing later because she's like, I got some food in me, and like she's just, you could just see her just chugging back the things. It's just, oh man, <laughs> fucking hysterical. It's like, like Jean Grey versus hot dogs is the AVX I wanted. Yes, <laughs> uh, from this, she she's trying to appeal to to famine because famine's just a kid. Famine is like, uh, you know, no, I need to make everybody stop from being, you know, fat and destroying everybody. Apocalypse, if you can hear me, you promised me that America's bread basket, and then she goes off to fight uh, the bread basket in a Captain America issue that we are not going to cover. Absolutely not. But you apparently, couldn't, she you couldn't make me. Destroyed you a could. bunch of wheat fields, and Captain America went and punched her. You couldn't make me. Um, you could absolutely yeah. could not make me do that. Um, uh, Cyclops is chasing down War, who's like, "Oh, I hate soldier b- 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 monuments, I hate statues. <laughs> I hate yep. statues." What about me? Like, I was broken, but they spent all this money repairing statues. Like, you're in a Veterans Administration hospital. Like, you were paralyzed. I think they were trying to take care of you, buddy. Yeah, you yeah. know, you, you, you I weren't. Mean, uh, arguably, you were, you were uh, one of the few that they were taking care of. <laughs> like, <laughs> Cyclops does one of the weirdest things in this too. Like, again, there's goofiness that happens. They just need to shut up. Like Cyclops bounces as a little ball. Like he rolls up in a ball, bounces off the ground, does a little like handstand on the horse. Uh, and then in, in a headstand motion, blast inside the horse's mouth with his beam. This is so fucking good, dude. It's dude. It's like the goofy. It's like what I'm here for. I want this goofy ass action. And they just keep saying the same thing over and over. But like, uh, read the read the dialogue yeah. here and how horrible it is. Because as he's doing the handstand, he says, "Leave apocalypse and join us. Our final product, we hope, will be peace." What? <laughs> <laughs> what is what? Who is why? <laughs> the commas. Like uh, uh, whenever somebody does a little comma in the, in the middle of like he's doing a headstand on a flying horse. At the time he's saying that, we hope. Why would you add that? We hope our final like, product. Let him be a little bit we confident. Hope will be peace. Well, because they, they were talking about um, this is like that saber tooth daredevil issue. Um, the because uh, they were talking about the products of war and it being civilian casualties. You know, uh, but him saying we hope it will be peace, and then zapping the thing. We peace. Wars produce is destruction. <laughs> wars produce. Like it is just uh, very very silly. Uh, but they, they, uh, 
he you know war runs away and cyclops and jean gray reunite uh and they're like oh angsting you know who can blame the people for hating us uh what's going on on the ship they go back to the ship there's a very funny uh little bit of thing where uh ice man shoots a bunch of ice pellets at apocalypse mm-hmm. and apocalypse like you attack me with snowballs i expect better to you i'm immune to ice i have ways to combat it <laughs> and his way to combat it is turning his hand into a gigantic shield and then like and then just bouncing it's the same them way directly. i combat ice during the winter <laughs> by staying in a house <laughs> like, uh, so good yes absolutely yeah okay. it's just the dumbest yeah. thing in the world i also like the fact that he deflects it into beast because why not <laughs> is do boink uh, he's basically just saying like, you know, the politicians are going to try to control us. They're going to put us in camps, you know, all of that stuff. Uh, you think for a second that beast is going to be swayed by this. He's really making a play to get beast. Um, but beast is too angry. He throws a big piece of tech stuff, but this was all what apocalypse wanted, uh, to destroy another stabilizer or something that makes the ship crash. Like it had been spinning, but now it's going to crash. Mm-hmm. Uh, and beast is going to have a long tale about being sad about this throw. <laughs> uh, it's going to be his arc during the next, uh, next issue. Yeah. Um, it's the cloaking device he destroys, uh, the- and the, and the stabilizer. So yeah. now there's like a panic in the city as they think there's aliens cause this gigantic ships in the air. And it, and it crashes onto Manhattan and like destroys a building. Yeah. Um, it's multiple buildings. Like it's just falling. Debris is falling everywhere. Like this is a, this is a major disaster. This is a, this is X-Men, yeah. this is X-Men 911. So. Yep. Uh, it, I love, uh, I love Apocalypse just having his like gravity boots, like the ship's flipping around and Iceman has to use his ice and, and Beast is using acrobatics and Apocalypse is just upside down standing with his arms crossed. Yes. <laughs> like laughing. Like it's, it's, it's fucking king shit the you know, it's super good the panel where his head is coming from like the top of the panel and his his, his mouth yeah. is just wide open as he's like look at the screens look at what you did yeah. beast look at this this is hilarious it's fucking oh, it's man. awesome like mm-hmm. it's very good delicious villain shit you know um cyclops and gene gray are wangsting about the damage they're seeing the ship start to crash you know we had to stop this uh but what about the horsemen and then bam uh archangel flies through i love this uh Scott just immediately tries to zap him. Like Scott is so mercurial during X Factor, this X Factor run. Mm-hmm. Like he's just going back, like kissing, going back and forth. He's zapping. Like, he's destruction incarnate. If we can't stop him, like he's just trying to kill him immediately. The last time we checked in on X Factor, Scott, he was like crying about how he drove Angel to die from the wings because he was jealous of him, ki- like being close to Gene. Like he's he's all over the place. This is the messiest Scott Summers has ever been. Absolutely, and he's a messy dude. And he's always messy. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, and no. and this is where we start realizing that like oh like Archangel probably there's a little bit of Angel in there right and that that's this is yeah. going to continue for a long time of uh, Angel like trying to come to terms with his with his new powers and his new abilities and like what his new whole whole steez is. Um, but Gene points yep. out like hey he could have killed us and he didn't. Um, so like yeah come over here and let's, let's go, let's go start saving people. Yep. Uh, however, the ship crashes in the empire state building, uh, knocking off the antenna of it. Uh, Jean gray tries to stop the antenna, you know, from falling on people. And here comes power pack. Yeah. Like, Hey, it's power pack. One of them has gravity powers. <laughs> they can help. Uh, Jean just kept saying they're children and Scott's, you know, Scott classic on brand, even for future Scott is like, they're soldiers. <laughs> uh, you know, they'll, they'll do what I tell them to do. <laughs> like, uh. This is the moment that I realized I was only halfway through this comic book and I despaired. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hit the little button and I was like, oh, there are 16 pages of this. Okay, let's let's get this. Let's do it. Yeah. No, yeah. Power usually when power pack shows up, the party's over. Uh one of the uh molecula, one of the power packs, uh turns real small and kicks pestilence in the head, uh, knocking her off her horse where she dies. Uh, this is a death of pestilence here. They try to save her, but they can't. Uh, Archangel cuts the needle in half to make it harder to to hold on to. You know, so he's doing some real villain half half measure shit. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, meanwhile, Beast is attacking Apocalypse and just not being good at it. <laughs> and, and you will stop me, oh beast of little brain. Beast of little brain. <laughs> how could how could Hank McCoy show his face to Apocalypse ever again? Like if I got burned this bad, I would just be like, you're right. I'm not I'm not a good dude. I just need to retire from the X-Men now. 
consistently publicly owned. Like, just go be a weightlifter. Go be like a boy toy. Yeah, absolutely. You know? yeah, find yourself a sugar mama. Uh, he's distracting him so Iceman can ice him up, but that doesn't work, of course, because it's ice. Because uh, <laughs> it's just <laughs> ice. <laughs> Apocalypse. <laughs> Grabs this lever and goes, you passed the test. You have now reached the second, second level, level of difficulty. difficulty. <laughs> this is Junk. so fucking stupid. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah. uh, meanwhile, Archangel starts going for the uh, power pack when he is teleported away at the last second. Um, so, uh, the power pack and Scott and Gene have a moment to kind of catch their breath where Scott and Gene decide, oh, this is my apocalypse horse now and steal the horse, yep. which is really Pestilence funny. Pestilence has died. Uh, you know, the, there's a, the power packs like her, she died. Her mount, however, suffered little damage. And Gene Gray in the next panel, Gene Gray and Scott are on it, ready to leave. See you later, kids. Yeah, very good. Uh, and then they're like, how can we help? And they're like, help by saving the city. Uh, Jean Grey, again, is like, they're children, Scott, you know? And it's like, well, like, you know, they can do search and rescue stuff. Um, we go back, uh, since they've teleported, Apocalypse teleported the horsemen back onto the ship. Now they're fighting a Iceman and Beast uh, here. Mm-hmm. And the regular horsemen, the non-Archangel ones, are still chumps, but Archangel shows up and fucks everything up. Yes. You know, he's, uh, he's, he's still very powerful. Yeah, uh, they they're kind of talking about like, oh, this is Warren, and we thought Warren was dead, which gives uh, Iceman an idea. Um, he's like, you know, hey, you guys, distract him. I'm I'm gonna come at him and do something else. Uh, and it takes a little while to happen, but eventually, it looks like uh, Iceman kind of throws himself in front of Archangel, and Archangel literally, literally splits him in half. Um, and it looks like, you know, Bobby is dead, but of course we see this really funny, like Iceman in the shadows panel, which I think is just maybe, <laughs> maybe one of the fa- funniest things here. Um, good, good icon material. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you know, this is something that shocks, uh, Warren because you know, he was, you yeah. know, it's one thing to say that you're the archangel of death. It's another one to actually kill your friend for, you know, 20 years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this, this snaps him out of it, which was Iceman's plan. Uh, apocalypse is like you know you've passed the final test <laughs> like everything's a test like welcome to level three uh but but archangel's like fuck this shit you know you made me but i'm not going to be your creature like i'm not going to be owned by you he starts throwing his little things and apocalypse does his move which is to put up a big metal shield uh, i could watch this all day i love it when that happens <laughs> um they pop you know they pop off uh they're gonna they're gonna fight now that they have archangel on their side uh iceman joins you know I uh, Archangel kind of you know oh I tried to kill you, angst angst angst. I love when I love uh, like the 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 art for uh, Apocalypse like when he's got his big huge arms out with the shoulder pads like he doesn't just like shape shift into stuff he like literally just shape shifts into like stuff that I was drawing in middle school, right like just yeah. just, just like his arms have like little weird tank treads at the bottom for no reason at all and it's just really good I just really like it. I, I adore it. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to, because, you know, I used to have all those action figures. I had a bunch of Apocalypse action figures, and one of them uh, had a little hammer hand he could have, but they never did any of the weird shit. Like, I want to buy, like, a deluxe one where he has the big shield arm and, and turns into these mechanical struts and stuff. Uh, it's very cool. It, to me, it's like a, a the serious version of Warlock. Yeah, Like, exactly. Warlock turning into yeah. a car is, is kind of fun to me. Like, I like it now. But this, to me, when I read it, I was like, this is fucking badass. Yeah. That's what this is. This is you fucking know? cool. This is, yeah. Yeah, this is incredibly cool. Uh, you know, he, he knocks out Warren. Uh, there's all this business. Uh, War barely is able to clap, uh, but Beast saves Warren. You know, they, uh, they zap him. I, Iceman's like, talk about worthless. Uh, all I need to take you out is a little ice. You can say that about everything you ever fight, Iceman, for your entire life. Um, yep. And then, uh, there's uh, a great panel here. This pose that Apocalypse is in <laughs> on the bottom of this page, dude. <laughs> like, uh, like runway po- Apocalypse working it. Oh, dude, it's so good. It's so funny. And then uh, and the next page where uh, he's re- he reminds everybody that Caliban exists is like, I'm taking this dude with me. Um, <laughs> see you later. This is incredible. He he takes him and he's like, in exchange, you may have my ship. Uh, tame it, master it if you can. It will in time test your, the limits of your endurance. Welcome to it, possess you, even. And he's just, he's flying away. He's like a mile away at this point, just talking about like the ship I just gave you is going to fuck you up. 
don't live in it. And the X-Men, of course, or the X-Factor immediately are like, oh, the, we got to live somewhere. Let's live in this ship. Let's live in this ship from now uh, on. I love his li- weird so little funny. shape-shifting legs. As he's carried in an orb in one side full of Caliban and just yeah. war in the other leg. It's just so fucking dumb and weird his wings. and good. Yeah. Um, it's great. And this whole like wow. ship like collapses down and just barely misses the... Uh, uh, Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sta- you can yeah. tell I've checked out of any kind of America worship, right? <laughs> that uh, that thing that they put Captain America's yeah. shield on in the Spider-Man movie. What was that called again? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'm sick of remembering 9-11 and I'm sick of remembering the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. I got to get out of this. Sick of remembering all 38 stripes and 20 stars. I did fuck this shit. <laughs> I'm yeah. done. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then one of the one of the most hilarious moves is the spaceship is crashing. It literally smashes. It just <laughs> like a a boot to an ant smashes their old X Factor headquarters, and just like it's Symbol. gone now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so they don't have to get a new mailing address or anything. It just all the mail comes to the ship now. Yeah, this uh, is uh this is X Factor Plaza Lot One. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They destroy it, and they're like, hey, everything's cool now. You can join us, Warren. And he does a thing similar to uh, Carol Danvers in that Avengers, that first appearance of Rogue issue that we we talked about, um, where he's like, yeah, you know, I've been mutilated and toyed with and everything. Uh, I didn't kill myself. You never looked for me or anything. Like, I waited for you guys to do this. While Apocalypse was torturing me and doing this to me, you guys could have made sure I was dead and, like, at least looked for a body. You know, fuckers. Mm-hmm. Which is which is fair, I think. This, uh, but they don't have to reckon with it. It gets interrupted by reporters uh, on the roof. Yeah, uh, they're calling them out. They're like, "You're mutants. We should arrest you." They're like, "Yeah, we we stopped. You know, we we stopped this from crashing into the rest of the city. Like, we're good." <laughs> they're know? they're just looking around at like the Empire State Building being destroyed. Like, you stopped what <laughs> exactly? <laughs> you, what, you know, what exactly did you stop? Yeah, I seem to recall Power Pack doing a lot of things, but. Um, there's a, you know, don't listen to him. That blue dude's a villain. I saw him slicing up the city and this is where he goes. I wasn't always a blue dude, uh, or a villain. Um, and they're, they're, they're talking, they're just doing their speech, you know? Uh, about acceptance and humans and mutants. Yeah, this is all boring as shit to me. Like, I, I just could not be yeah. bothered to, to even skim a lot of this stuff. Like, it's just, you know, we're mutants, aren't aliens, blah, blah, blah. blah. It's just, I mean, I, I just, it's just constant. Like, it's the, the same thing that they've repeated throughout the book, and it's just really, really boring. Um, it was, it, I wasn't always a blue dude. I, I don't know, like, <laughs> I can't decide if I want to want to make that into a berserk meme or into an arrested develop meme, development meme. And it's, I'm just happy that it could fit for both. <laughs> The uh, all of that, like you know, wanksting about humans, mutants getting along, like that is X Men, right? Mm-hmm. Like I get that. It's just you can't just have the characters say it back and forth to each other for forty pages and expect me to it to have like an impact. Exactly. You know, yeah. like I'm not ordinarily not here for that, but I'm fucking done with it here. Like I don't want to see it anymore in this shit. Uh, we get our little coda issue here, twenty six, and which is also like funny stuff happens, but it's them during search and rescue and PR turning around um a lot of again stuff that we've seen a lot of like cops being like we should arrest them oh but they're saving people you know uh going back and forth uh and it seems like archangel is going to hang out uh you know they start uh you know the the cops are down there they're pointing guns on them archangel who is still kind of like apocalypse pilled throws a bunch of needles at them you know it's like you, you we are supposed to come quietly because you have guns uh, he doesn't hit him. He misses on purpose. It's a warning shot, but then he flies away Yeah, for a time. Scree is the, the noise that he yep. makes when he flies away, which is very funny to me. Um, and then this, this, you know, triggers the X factor to be like, all right, let's, let's, let's get out of here. Like we could just leave. <laughs> um, well, they, they see an explosion. Like there's a gas main that blows up somewhere hmm. that they have to go check out. Is a, is where they're headed. One of the funniest things that happens in this thing is a bunch of reporters wander onto the ship and get paralyzed by like a field that only lets mutants in. Uh, we don't check it back in on these guys for f- 15 pages. And when we do, they're still here. They're still. So were they being like, cause it looks like they're in pain Zapped. when this has happened. Like, are they just like in constant pain? Like, is it one of those things that like, you know, this will kill you and it will hurt the entire time you're dying. <laughs> like, is it one of those situations? <laughs> I think so. I oh, think so. Dude. Uh, we get uh, we cut over to apocalypse where he's at in his like Antarctic base. Uh, where he calls famine back after famine uh, destroyed the America's breadbasket uh, there. 
Um, so Captain America failed to save crops. Um, <laughs> but we're, we're not going to be hanging around with Apocalypse very much. This is just showing us he's still in play and he still has his horsemen. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, X Factor is trying to kind of basically flying around the city, uh, trying to you know put fires out. Um, and yep. you know Beast is already doing his thing where he's talking about how dumb he is. Uh, and as they're flying around, they see like you know these gas pipelines are or gas mains are still exploding. So like they're blowing firemen off their uh, um perch or whatever Ring, you call it yeah, their, stuff, their, yeah. their bucket thing um and yeah. you know warren shows up to like catch them catch them so like he's not like he may be apocalypse pilled but he still like wants to help yeah he's he's conflicted mm-hmm. um beast is wangsting specifically about blowing up the gyroscope thing and he's saying yeah i'm so dumb i wouldn't have done that if i was smart uh i have to make up for it you know i've got to go help people and uh they're you know they they're like beast don't do it uh here and cyclops is like no no he knows the risk he's not just gonna let people die like it's okay for him to turn dumb a little bit um which you know fair it's okay for Uh, him to turn dumb (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's it's empty head no thoughts it's okay uh iceman finally shows up to the party like you would really think that iceman would be the principal fire put out guy on x-factor but he waits for everyone else to take a turn yeah. uh, first. And he's like, holy cow, I wish I was fighting the horsemen instead of this. Like, this is really, like, this was written from the perspective of the fire. Um, the, the sergeant is supposed to arrest them after they put out this fire, but he's like, hey, there's actually a, a building that collapsed that has people trapped in it, in case you're interested. Yeah. You know, he doesn't arrest them. He sends them off to go do some more search and rescue. Uh, which, you know, Cyclops interprets as literally just blowing more buildings up, which is very funny yeah. to me. Um, <laughs> just smash it open. Uh, they do that. They, they get them out. Uh, while this is happening, Beast is remembering uh, Trish Tilby, his girlfriend, the person who exposed the connection between Warren Worthington and X-Factor. Uh, and Iceman's like, yeah, that, that lady sucked. And he's like, no, 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 she's good. I saved her. And she was nice and, and, and smart and pretty and good, good. You know, because uh, he's, he's turning into an idiot. It's such a just like a ridiculous thing. Like they just lean into it so hard. <laughs> like they just go so hard in on that's do getting stupider and stupider by the minute. And I just that's very funny. It is uh it's a very funny thing to have happen to Beast. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh there. Uh they save him uh they save a redhead out of the building, which Psychops like Madeline. Uh you know, his ex wife, because he, he doesn't he can't tell redheads apart. That's Psychops this whole thing. I mean, to fair, to be fair, most like teenage boys can't either. So, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, uh, and this is where he begins for like several pages explaining him and Madeline Pryor and confessing and apologizing to Gene. And it does the abstraction of comics like they get sent to this hospital to bring the the wounded while he's explaining what happened. And like it had to have taken a little while, elevator rides, stairs, and stuff. But he's still talking. Like it's very funny to me. Well, the, uh, like yeah, the well, shot of her carrying all of the people, including Scott, uh, who has carried a baby, like he, she is just, you know, TK and them to a hospital. Like they're, they yeah. can definitely hear this conversation. They're like, what in the fuck is this dude talking about? <laughs> the group, yeah. They just dropped an <laughs> alien really spaceship and he's like, I, you, you married another woman because she looked like your ex who you thought was dead. What the fuck is your deal, yeah, my dude? thought she came back to life. And he's just like talking about his sloppy divorce. Like I realized my mistake. I was living a lie. I couldn't concentrate. You know, I couldn't lead the X-Men, but Maddie married me in good faith. You know, all of this stuff. Like, we had a baby. Uh, she hated me being away. You know, and again, like, he's holding someone else's baby while, as like a visual aid for this description, uh, this thing. And he's just explaining what he's been doing for a long time to a character who he could have talked to already. It's important that he finally tells Jean, I guess, you know, and apologizes like, no, no, I want you. Uh, at this point, I don't want to be with Madeline Pryor. It was real fucked up for me to marry your clone. Uh, you know, but he, to be fair, what, the only thing I really like about this is he says, part of me thought it was you coming back to life, you know? And that makes sense to me. Like, they live in a fantastical world. Mm-hmm. If somebody looked exactly like the person, you know, they live in a world of amnesia and stuff. And they usually don't acknowledge that kind of stuff. But in this, you know, him acknowledging it, it works to me a little bit as an excuse. Yeah. Yeah, um, and you know, at, at least he's telling Gene stuff that happened to him. 
<laughs> like that's a good that's yeah, progress. He's, he's talking. <laughs> yeah. The, the time and place is exactly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but but it's <laughs> it could you know. not be a worse situation. Uh, yeah. I saw a, a this is a at the video. same time as or go ahead. I just saw I saw a video online the other day of a couple uh, of a guy breaking up with his girl. Um, like while they were sit down, set down at the. Um, one of the front tables of like a comedy show, <laughs> and this like dude, he, he, kept, <laughs> he kept like whispering to her and like, and there, somebody started recording it from the side, and like the comedian was recording it, his show or whatever. Like it was just, it was looked like it was one of the most awkward things that have ever happened to anybody. And like it's just astounding to me. Like I feel like that's a cyclops move. That's exactly what Scott Summers <laughs> would do. Let me take you this to this hugely public like, place. Yeah, this is- yeah. This is incredibly public, and while they're doing something else, like you shouldn't invite me to do all that search and rescue if you're just going to break up with me. Uh, he explains. So he explains that Madeline Pryor's body was found, but he couldn't identify it, and they couldn't find the baby. At the, while this is happening, Madeline Pryor is in Dallas, uh, so it's revealed that she's alive. We get a little bit of this in this issue, but that's happening during Fall of the Mutants. Other stuff uh, that, that's happening here, and eventually she's going to become the Goblin Queen. And be, uh, do Inferno, which is something I haven't read in a long time. I do not remember how Inferno holds up. I feel like I've I've read that relatively recently and did not have a, a good time with it. So, yeah, it's it's of this era. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a you know I definitely need a break from this era. I'm not suggesting we do it. Um, the Doctor starts bad mouthing Beast and is like, you know, all the mutants keep fucking us. You know the uh, the the big ship, the smile faces, the Marauders. <laughs> All this stuff. And Beast looks at him and goes, the smile faces, they weren't mutants. And sheds a single tear. Dude, it's uh, absolutely hilarious. Uh, he starts, like, basically crumbling under the guilt of all of the things that he has done. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Trish Tilby, who has been at this hospital bed, is like, hey, I, I'm okay. You guys need this room for other people. Uh, I'm just going to walk outside yeah. on my cane <laughs> that I have procured from somewhere. <laughs> um, and she sees Hank basically just like in the corner, sitting down and crying, just openly weeping. Um, yep. And it, it, this starts like a whole thing where he starts like confessing to her. And, you know, she's, 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 it's, it's this is so fucking weird, man. Like, I don't, I don't know it's, what they're <laughs> going for at all. Like, I'm really, really confused. He, it's really, he's explaining. Imagine how confused Trish Tilby would be. He's like, it's my fault. I got dumb. I smashed the ship. It smashed the city. I killed people. I hurt people. And it's like, wait, you got dumb? What, what is going on, <laughs> What are man? you talking about, man? <laughs> like, and then uh, Iceman walks up and he's like, hey, get, get the hell away from him. You know, you're a jerk. And she's like, no, no, I wasn't a jerk. I just hated X Factor. Uh, and he's like, oh, yeah, we did pretend to be real shitheads. <laughs> I never thought that, that <laughs> us pretending to be villains would cause somebody to think we were bad. This is like every uh, weird male celebrity. Like, um, who was the, the streamer guy? Dr. Disrespect? Like, oh, it was just a bit. Like, I was just doing a bit. Yeah. I was just a horrible asshole and <laughs> spying on people because it was a bit. It was funny. I mean, not re- it wasn't supposed to be funny. It was supposed to be horrible. Like, it's just that. It's only that. <laughs> Men love to be X Factor as a bit. Like, it's just, <laughs> they'd rather be X Factor as a bit than go to therapy. Uh, Iceman also says, like, hey, Apocalypse was just doing this to make fun of you. Like, he would have smashed, he could smash the chip, you idiot. He didn't need you to do it. Like, he would have found a way to make the ship go down no matter what. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, which is true. Like, you know, pretty, pretty silly uh, here. Uh, they make up. They're just like, uh, oh, you you like mutants? Oh, then everything's okay. Then, you know, uh, Iceman says, hey, we have to go do some more search and rescue. You should stay here. And Beast is like, no, I'm going to get back. I'm going to do it. Yep. Like, you know, I don't care if I get uh, too dumb. I made this mess. No matter what it cost, I got to try yep. and fix it. Um, yeah. We cut over to uh, Cyclops and Storm, or excuse me, Cyclops and Jean Grey, who are still doing their thing, um, which is just saving people. Uh, and they, I mean, it's just it's just more of the same. They're they're like you know yep. dropping some people off uh, when the cops confront them and are like, "Hey, you goggles!" Uh, and <laughs> it's the dude who was going to arrest them, but instead they've said like, "Oh no, no, you guys are ab- absolutely totally great, and we should throw you a parade. <laughs> like we're gonna we're gonna go do something. Yep. Like it's it's okay." And they're like, "Oh." Okay, well, we're just going to go back to that ship that we dropped on the city and then go sleep there, I guess. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they suggest it. The, so the whole city, some reporters said they were heroes, and the whole city changes their mind instantly, mm-hmm. which is really fucking weird. Uh, they're like, you know, your ship destroyed X-Factor uh, complex. We could take you into productive 
custody unless you feel like sleeping on the ship. Like, it's real weird that a cop is the one who suggests that. And they're like, okay, give us a ride. Uh, and, you know, or the, the cops offer them a ride. So the police give them like a little escort to go sleep in Apocalypse's ship that Apocalypse said would test them in ways they'd never been tested. Just amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Fucking idiots. Like, they're just the dumbest era of the X-Men. It's just I absolutely just, incredible and the whole city has changed their mind they go by this bar and everyone's like look it's the heroes i want to shake their hands <laughs> like, it's very funny uh while it's happening though the important thing here is that on the tv madeline Pryor has done like this open letter thing uh she's being shot by one of the guys from mpr in uh in dallas who is talking to scott like i want to add a, a personal plea you know scotty wherever you are I wish you the best find our son you know, he does not know that Scott's alive. Or that his son, Scott so, does not know that his son is alive. Or his son is alive. Yeah, yeah. Or that Madeline's alive. Or that Madeline's alive. Uh, Mad- yeah, he doesn't know any of this stuff. Um, Meanwhile, little Jean girls are a, bringing, yeah. like, roses yeah. to fucking Jean Grey in the back of a cop car. Like, I'm, 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 yeah. what is happening? I, I assume the cop car isn't moving at this point, but I like to think that the, the car is going at full speed and the little girl is caught up. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Uh, Jean Grey kisses a cop. Uh, we cut back in on those reporters who are still being electrocuted. It's been electrocuted for, uh, like, as this they is, go in. This, this has got to be what three hours <laughs> minimum, like at least three hours. I love it so much. Uh, they all go in to find a place to sleep. They're like, you know, Apocalypse might have been a maniac, but at least he had a bed. I'm like, man, you guys are so like, do a perimeter check. You yeah, think you could have left a trap, you morons. Uh, they go and uh, Cyclops is is angsting about you know the human mutant thing. And about Madeline Pryor. And then Jean Grey comes up and is like, no, 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 you know, the world needs you. I need you. Like, Madeline's dead. The Phoenix is dead, but I'm alive. Like, for once, you know, let's not let anything stand between us. Yeah. And let's, let's fuck immediately on this, on the floor of this ship. <laughs> Just right now. They I would do, like to fuck um, immediately. In the observation bay. In the like, observation in a little bay. Clear yeah. window looking out on the city. <laughs> like, just absolutely incredible stuff. Uh, the next day they wake up and they don't want to put on their dirty clothes. So they're putting on the horseman outfits for just like a minute. Yeah, I didn't understand this uh, at all. Like, so they're, cause I thought they were about to go into the parade dressed as the villains. And I'm like, this is a bold move. Dude, <laughs> this you is... guys are fucking idiots. But no, uh, apparently the other day, uh, beast or Iceman saved a tailor and the tailor made them new outfits. Perfect. Uh, so they don't have to wear these, uh, these horseman outfits. You know, get, get the rarest appearance here of like Iceman in the Horseman outfit uh, here. So they have a new costume and uh, they go out in their new costumes. Um, you know, they're talking about peace and everything. And Apocalypse is like, you know, this was generally really good. It tested their physical prowess, but the testing isn't done yet because, uh, you know, they've stripped themselves of their human identities. You know, they're glorifying their mutant heritage. This will probably backfire on them, but it's not them fighting. Yes. You know. And uh, um, and we and end we, this with there's uh, the parade, with the yeah, new costumes. With, with fucking uh, Archangel looking down from above as his teammates, his ex teammates, <laughs> get driven around by cops in a ticker tape parade, which has got to feel like something fucking weird, man. Absolute dog shit. And one of the uh, so this is a really iconic Cyclops and Jean Grey costume. I think people oftentimes forget about the shitty brown and yellow beast costume of this era. Yeah, yeah. Like I, it looks real bad. I genuinely uh, like the. I, it's, I don't like Iceman's like championship belt. I don't like his his yeah. <laughs> WDW <laughs> belt or whatever. Uh, yeah. But the Cyclops, especially the Jean Grey outfit. I think the Jean Grey outfit looks really really dope. So that's no, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is this is an iconic Cyclops. I know the Cyclops. The first exposure I had to this design was him in the Spider-Man and X-Men Arcade Revenge mm. Super Nintendo game. This is what he wears or something nice. very similar to this. Nice. Nice. Um, but that, that's the end. And I'm, I'm happy to put it behind me. Uh, it was a challenging read. Like funny shit happens. But I, I think I've decided I don't like how Louise Simonson writes. Same. Like she's a fine plotter. You know, things happen that I like. Uh, but I do not like her dialogue. It's just it's just so. Uh, it's so over explanatory. Like we mentioned it several times of like, we, we know we, we, you have told us this. We have, yeah, you have made your point. Like, please I, just let something, let, let somebody breathe at some point during this issue. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, Claremont is better, which is a weird thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have, have you looked at the cover of the next issue? <laughs> I did not know. Uh, just, just go ahead and click next and just look at this cover. Me... It's a pretty good time. <laughs> um, 
come on, come on, come on. Oh. Internet's being weird. Whoa. That is a yep. that is that's a lot going on over there. So that's definitely leech. Iceman has created a gigantic uh Christmas tree on top of a building. That's fantastic, um, dude. I mean, if you're Iceman, like wouldn't you be doing that kind of shit all the time? Literally nonstop. Yeah. And so but for the grace of God, you know, someday perhaps. I can be Iceman. Um yeah, do you want to do the Remender X Force? Yes, yeah, let's, let's do it. Yeah, let's commit to it. Yeah, that that sounds great. There, there's a bunch of issues that'll be a longer run, but it's real good. Uh, I've only read it once. I don't have history with it. There's no nostalgia. I just really like the comic. I read it for fun a couple of years ago, and it's super good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. really fun. It goes into a lot of the um, angsty stuff, and it's just genuinely fun. Like it's just a it, like they do cool X Men shit in that comic book. So uh, yeah. it'll be Kid Apocalypse. Yeah, it'll be uh, the the new Horseman. Like it's a what a what a, a smooth transition. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really think about that. But like super cool horseman, like that little drummer boy mm-hmm. guy and stuff. Like that stuff's all great. It's going to be a good time. Um, I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, what should people do if they like this show? Uh, go fuck themselves. No, I'm kidding. I'm dead everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've got some stresses, everybody. I just got to I gotta work them out on my own, okay? Uh, no, they should go to <laughs> duckfeed.tv slash Patreon or patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. Both of those things work now uh, because I've messed it up so oh, much. Nice. Um yeah. And they should donate some money. Doing so gets you all kinds of exclusive content. Uh, you get access to the Slack channel. There's tons and tons of exclusive shows, exclusive podcasts that you can go listen to. Uh, the coolest thing is probably, I really, really like the uh, unfilmable stuff that you guys have been doing. It's fun. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I think it's a really good show. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I think that's a really nice $5 benefit yeah. uh, kind of thing. We're doing cool stuff uh, coming up in the future as well. Uh, for it like i'm finally gonna get chernobyl on the network yeah uh, which is longer than usual but i think it counts yeah that's real um, good shit oh, the uh it, it's one of my favorite pieces of art mm-hmm. uh that miniseries i think it's it's a, ta- a staggering accomplishment and then um, if you uh you could either go yeah. with jared harris and go straight to the terror season one which is fantastic horror or you could go with okay. the the other guy and go to our flag meets death which is not oh. fantastic horror it's not even trying to be horror yeah. so does have absolutely terrifying stuff yes uh we have a new show coming out soon me and cole recorded the first episode of it uh we have our art and music and everything. We're just doing scheduling stuff. But it'll come out on opposite Saturdays of this show. Oh. So now there's something every Saturday for Duck Feed. Every other Saturday, it's going to be Best Quality Vacuum, our Breaking Bad show. Yeah. I'm excited to do that as well. I still haven't started the last season of Better Call Saul because I am drowning in good television right now. But as soon as I finish that, I think I'm, I'm up for another Breaking Bad rewatch. And I might watch along with you guys. So. Oh, yeah. And I, I'm very excited about you watching the last season of Better Call Saul. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've, um, I am. It's it's one of those things of like, I, I, Autumn likes to to binge them, um, and I like to binge them as well. But it's one of those. It's one of the few shows that I really really enjoy that seems to like everybody on my Twitter feed also really really enjoys. So like everybody talks about it all the time, and I just get jealous. So yeah, yep, yep, yep. It's a yeah. It's a it, yeah. You're gonna have a good time, I think. Uh, otherwise, um, you can tell you tell your friends about the show. You could uh, post about us on Twitter. You could make a TikTok and put our audio in the TikTok and just a <laughs> picture of your face, like a video of your face reacting to us and laughing and having a great time. That'd be pretty cool. Um, I, I mean, I'm not telling you what to do, but that, that would be neat. <laughs> and uh, that's it. We, we're I just found this out too. This is just breaking news. But I I have like I look at the internet before we get going. Mm-hmm. I have the internet window open, so I just saw this thing pop up. Uh, the guy who plays Quicksilver in the X-Men movies is going to be play Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, he looks great. He looks exactly like him. The um, Evan Peters? Weird casting. Quicksilver? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not the other guy. Quicksilver. Yeah. Okay. Into it. Yeah. Real weird. Uh, real weird. Did you uh, see? I'm, I'm uh, interested. Uh, uh, I don't think they ever confirmed this, and I'm pretty sure it's fake, but did you see Fantastic Four casting? Um, no. I, it's uh, the thing that they mm-hmm. supposedly revealed at the Disney event um, was Krasinski as Reeve Richards. Um, I can't remember her name, but it's the uh, actress that plays Villanelle in Killing Eve um, as uh, Sue Richards, who is great. I, f- astonishingly great casting. Uh, John Boyega as uh, Johnny Storm, which this is the whole thing. That, I like that. I, I like it. I just, it makes me call into question the whole thing because after his experience on star Wars, like he was, he was pretty, yeah, well, he wouldn't do that. Yeah. He's adamant in the yeah. press about like, I'm not going to put myself through that again. Um, and then, uh, once again, Seth Rogen is the thing, which keeps popping up all over the place. Oh. Um, hmm. and I, I could actually see that being pretty good. Like, I mean, it's just, he wouldn't be a 
I mean, it's just a, a voice and a kind of vague face. So, like, I, I could see that being okay. The uh, looking through, uh, kind of googling that, it looks like they're. It seems pretty rumory. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah, like who knows? Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, some of that's good. John Boyega would be great, but uh, yeah, I can't imagine him doing it. And the big one was um, um, Henry Cavill as Doom. Oh, I that, I like that. I like that too. Uh, yeah, Henry Cavill is good. Um, when he's not Superman. Yes. Um, yes. The uh, yeah, I I'm I I have no problems with that generally. Like I don't love Krasinski as Mister Fantastic, uh, but it was not as bad as I thought. And I also kind of think that won't be the case. I think they're going to go younger. I think so too. And um, we'll see though. Yeah. yeah. We shall see. Uh, I'm excited, though. Uh, we at some point it'll it'll definitely be after the remender thing because we gotta wait for She Hulk to show up. We got another roundup of that coming as well. Oh yeah, yeah. We got so, we got a ton yeah. of She Hulk to talk about. Um, yep. Yeah. All right, dudes. See y'all later. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Take take care, everybody.